But I want to briefly review some function families, and I want to mostly look at power functions, functions that look like x to the n. Uh, I'm actually going to consider uh, even rational powers here, so we'll consider um, positive integer powers, some negative powers, and rational powers. And my goal in this is not to cover gazillions of examples. It's more to help you have a framework, make sure that you have a framework where you can recognize the basic shapes without having to use a graphing calculator or sit and plug points. So here's some basic graphs you should know. Of course you should know the graph of f of x equals x. Ask yourself, what's the power here? Well, there's an invisible 1 sitting there, so this is the n equals 1 case. And this is just a line. This is a 45 degree line through the origin. Make sure you recognize this function. Notice that uh, as x gets big, it's going to positive infinity. And as x gets big negative, it's going to minus infinity. So the end behavior, we would say, is down up because it's down on this side and it's going up on that side. All right, the next power function is when the power is 2. This is a basic quadratic. You get a parabola for the output. Of course, you should know this shape as well. There's symmetry. This is an even function. We'll talk about that in the next video or, or the last video. There's symmetry around the origin. Uh, all good to go. The end behavior for this function is up, up. It's up on this side. It's up on this side. So we would say the end behavior here would be up, up. All right, and now we look at when the power is 3, we're back to a end behavior of down up, and that's the basic shape. Now, I could keep going, but the point is this. Once you know these two shapes, by the way, uh, this x really is going to fit the pattern that I'm going to talk about, but I want to focus on these two basic graphs. You're actually able to more or less sketch a graph of any power of x. For example, if you want to know what does f of x equals x to the 6 look like? It's going to more or less look like x squared. What's going to happen is it's actually, let's say that it intersects here and here. It's going to be smaller, and then all of a sudden they're going to meet, and then it's going to grow faster. But it, that's more or less the graph. It's not a perfect graph, but that's more or less the graph of x to the 6. And so the point is, I recognize that any positive even power of x is going to look like x squared and similarly any positive odd power of x is going to look like x cubed and let's go ahead and graph uh, f of x equals x that's a positive odd power of x and it's kind of flat but it has the basic shape whereas x to the fifth is going to be similar it's just going to do this and it's going to look like that so x to the 13th, you can sketch a rough graph. It's going to do that and then do that, right? So you've got all of a sudden with two basic graphs, you have all the positive integer powers of x. Okay, we can also talk about radical powers. And so we'll write, for example, the square root of x. Make sure you realize the square root of x is exactly the same as x to the 1 half. There's its graph. Make sure you know it. The domain here would be 0 to infinity. So that's why the graph is starting there at 0. Um, the uh, f of x equals the cube root of x. It's the same as x to the 1 third. Here's the graph. And at this point, these two graphs gives you the basic shape for any uh, radical power. So if you want to graph x to the 1 fourth, the fourth root of x, it's going to more or less look like this. If you want to graph x to the one-fifth, it's going to more or less look like this graph down here. So once you know these couple of graphs, you've got a whole world of functions at your fingertips. Two more functions you should know. f of x is 1 over x. There's a vertical asymptote at 0. There's a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0 because the, the degree downstairs is 1 and the degree upstairs is 0. And so the basic shape looks like this. And then 1 over x squared is similar. Vertical asymptote, horizontal asymptote. The difference is both sides are shooting up to infinity around 0. And if you think about it, you can see why. Come over to this function with me. Let's together plug in values of x as they're getting close to 0, but on this side. So we plug in negative 1, we get negative 1. We plug in minus a half, and we get negative 2. We plug in minus a tenth, and we get negative 10. And so you can see that on this side, when you plug in small negative numbers, you get a 
big negative number as the output, whereas squaring, when you plug in negative 1, you square it, you get out 1. When you plug in minus a half, you square it, you get out positive, uh, and then you flip it, so positive 4. And so the point is the squaring actually shoots you up to infinity faster, but more importantly, it keeps everything positive. So I would just encourage you, make sure that you know the basic shapes of these two graphs. We're going to need those. All right, well, let's stop this video here. I want to do uh, just a couple of more videos. We'll talk briefly of function composition, symmetry, and transformations.